and he shall reign forever and ever. How many sing hallelujah chorus and choir sometime in the past? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I was raised in a Baptist church. God bless them. It still lives. It still exists. I joined the choir just so I can get close to her because we grew up in the same church. And I was 13. I remember I was 13. And the first, I just joined the choir and they were preparing to sing the Messiah for Christmas. Talk about a stretch. So, <laughs> but I remember I learned that song and I've always remembered the bass part. I'm not going to do it now. The, our time together is too precious, but uh, it's good to be together. And, uh, uh, I had a night of worship here on Friday. It was a wonderful time and scheduled another one for the 18th of March. And, uh, and then we've got another one scheduled for the, the, the 15th of April, and, and that'll be Good Friday. So that'll be a very unusual time. And then we have Easter on April 17th. So we have between now and Easter to really, I don't know how to put it, there, there's a message in you that needs to get out into the community. Because there's thousands of people that don't know the Lord. And you arguing, arguing politics with them won't help. Because it's not about that. Opening their heart to hear the good news of what God has already done for them. That's what they need to hear. Because it's a message for every man. Say for every man. Out of every nation, tribe, and tongue. That means every cultural expression. The gospel is for that. It's not against that. For God so loved the world, so we, we need to change how we, uh, how we view humanity, okay? See, everything that God does, He does by the power of His Word, amen? Whether it's healing or provision or protection, conversion, your salvation, how to, there are no limits in God, amen? How many know there's no limit in God? All things are still possible, even with our current governor. What is God's intention? What is his plan? Do you think he has a plan? What is his plan? He wants you to receive his power. That's the plan. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Now, how do you do this? How, how do we receive God's power? That's what I want us to look at this morning. Do we, do we receive his power by praying long prayers? Do we receive by greater sacrifice? Is there anything you have to do to receive God's power? Man, are you going to preach my message? Come on up again. Look at this in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Open your Bibles there. This is our verse for the day. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant, what? Mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, that word too I have uh, emphasized because that word too would be better translated into. God's not bringing you just on his own. He's taking your heart and he's putting you into a living hope. That happened the moment you got born again. How many remember that day? Everything changes. But in this verse, notice everything points not to the cross, but the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God's plan was not the cross. God's plan was always resurrection for himself. 
Think about this, church. The cross was only the means to get to resurrection. Think about the process. The moment Adam sinned, God spoke a word. Who did he speak that word to? He speak, spoke that word to Satan, to the devil, who had become the God of this world. The prophetic word was the means to get to the virgin birth. And the virgin birth was the means to get righteousness into the earth. Becoming a man was the means to get into Adam's authority. Do you know you have authority as a human being here? Until he became a man, he had no authority here. I knew this was a cult. You know, people have left this church because they think we're a cult. I call this historic biblical Christianity. I don't know about you. Getting Adam's authority was the means so that he could be tempted by sin. Becoming subjected to sin was the means to live without sin. Living without sin was the means to become the perfect sacrifice. And becoming the perfect sacrifice was the means to the cross. And the cross was the means to resurrection. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands? Thank God for his resurrection. It's by His resurrection that you can be born again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you see it there? Jesus was the firstborn. Say firstborn. You've read that many times, right? It, it's not talking about when He was born of, of, of a woman. No, Jesus was the first to be born a second time. Born again. Can you see it right there? He was born from the dead. That word from, circle that word from. It means out from. Out from the curse of sin, he came. Born again from death into life from the dead. Now let's look at the next verse. To an inheritance. He was born. He, he was resurrected from the dead to an inheritance. And that word to would be better translated into. He came into an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away. Now catch this. Reserved in heaven for you. He did this for you. He, Jesus came out of the dead into an inheritance. He had no inheritance until he came out from the dead. When Jesus came up from the grave, what did he do? He, he, he took his own blood and he offered it upon the eternal mercy seat, the real one. And when the blood of Christ was accepted as payment for your sin... That opened the door for you according to God's abundant mercy. Hallelujah. The door is open for any man to be born again. I'm offended you didn't use the word woman. It includes every man, woman, every child. Hi, guys. Am I scaring you? Am I shouting too loud? I, I got, are you loud too? I still got your drawing on my, on my board in my office. We are born into a living hope. Amen. We are born into an incorruptible inheritance and, and you can't change it. 
It can't be changed. It doesn't fade away. And catch it, your, your inheritance is waiting for you. To say, say, it's waiting for me. It's being carefully watched in heaven. That's what the word reserved means. It's a reserved seat. Honey, honey, hurry up, hurry up. We're going to miss it. No, don't worry. Don't worry. We got a reserved seat. No, it's right there. No one can sit in your spot. They're so quiet today. It's a reserved seat for you. Now circle that word for. I don't know why translators do what they do, but that word should be translated into. What God has in heaven reserved for you, this inheritance has one purpose. It's supposed to come into you. Into Not when you die, but right now as you live. This inheritance is for you. Hallelujah. Put your right hand on your head. Say, just receive this inheritance. It's incorruptible. It's undefiled. No one can take it from you. It belongs to you. It was purchased by blood. Hallelujah. And to them that believe. Are you one of those crazies that just really believe resurrection? Then the next verse is for you. It says, who are kept? Who is the who? The who is the you that receive the power of God. The who is the you that receive the resurrection of Jesus Christ and come into relationship with him. Born again into a living hope. Look at this. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed when? In the last time. Do you think we're in the last times? Now here it says, uh, by, by the power of God. But again, the word would be better translated in. You're not kept by po- God's power. No, you're kept in God's power. The power of God doesn't keep you. No, God keeps you in his power. Is this helping anyone? Now, how are you kept in God's power? Can you see it? Through faith. By faith. What keeps you in God's power? Faith keeps you in the power of God. Faith keeps you in the place where all things are possible. When his divine power is working in you, you just, now you follow. Amen. Now you go a different direction, don't you? Amen. Come on, help me out this morning. God's power within you makes you think differently. Now you follow after the mind of the Holy Spirit. Not your own thinking. Don't beat yourself up if you haven't arrived yet. That's not the purpose of this. What keeps you in the power of God? You're believing. He's renewing your thinking processes, is he not? But he's not done with you, and that's okay. It's by his abundant mercy. Amen. So, so this happens not by your ability, but by the word of God. Until every word that he speaks changes you completely by the power of that word. Does that make sense to you? The word of God says that he will take your infirmity and your sicknesses. It, doesn't it say that? Matthew eight seventeen. The word says, by his stripes, you are healed. Amen. Isaiah 53. Think about this. What what heals you? By his stripes. Think on that. When did he do that? When did it take place? By his stripes, 
you were healed. Not your praying. By his stripes, not your pleading. By his stripes, not some new wonder drug. By his stripes. I I want your faith to grow this morning. Every time you allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. Every time you allow his thought and his word to become uh, the dominance in your life. Great things will happen. This week for each of you, great things will happen. In Jesus' mighty name. Every time, all the time. But you got to get rid of your human reasoning. Can you see that? For it to take place. Why? Because you are kept in the power of God through faith. What would happen right now if you believe God? It's easy to quote the word. You guys all know it. It's easy to think you know it, but it's better to have it. Understand? First uh, John 4 and verse 4, John writes, You are coming out of God. You are of God. You've been born again, right? And that birth came out of the seed of God. You are born of God, little children, and have overcome them, those that are not born. Of God. Why? Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. That deserves a shout. Someone should be running. Now, you, I know you know this verse. You probably know it. But do you have it? What do I mean? When you walk into a room... Can demons remain in your presence? You're supposed to be greater than the demons. Can disease remain in the body of a person that you touch? If the greater one is in you, the the disease can't stay. Faith is uh, supposed to be the substance that you're living in. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. Trying to stretch your thinking here. Is this okay? Can anything stand against the power of God? When you know this and you know that you're kept by faith in the power of God, can anything stand against you? See, God wants to make his plan a reality in you. I know this is not your plan, but this is God's plan for your life. Every time you allow the Holy Spirit to have his way, great things will happen every time, all the time. Say every time. time. All the time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Put up the next slide, please. God wants his plan of reality in you. Hmm. Philippians 3.21 says, He will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body. How does he do that? According to the working by which he's able even to subdue all things to himself. That's a lot of words for the power of God. Jesus was risen from the dead. Why? Why? To heal your broken heart. To comfort the weary soul. He bore your sickness. Amen. Now Jesus wants you to walk in his likeness. The way he looks today. Not before the cross, but after resurrection. In glory. In the power of the spirit. Walking in faith. Understanding his ways. He told us, didn't he tell us, I have given you power over all the power of the enemy. Didn't Jesus say that? Hallelujah. When he reigns, is he reigning today? When he reigns, you reign. He's the authority 
in every situation. He is the authority in every situation in your life. Hallelujah. When Jesus reigns, everything is subject to his plan. Is this helping you today? He will make you perfectly whole. Say perfectly whole. Not half whole, but perfectly whole. Is Jesus reigning over your affection? Is he reigning over your desires? Is he reigning over your will? That's where he's taken us. That's when, when he says here, he will subdue all things for you. That's what he's talking about. When God touches you, have you ever been touched by the Holy Ghost? You'll never forget that moment. Everything is different. You can't help yourself. You're just a different person. When he touches you, it's a divine touch of life and power. It makes you come alive just like Jesus came alive in the grave. It quickens your mortal body so that you know God's the one who did it. God wants to make his plan a reality in you. And it's ready to be revealed in the last days. Amen. How many know we're in the last days? And in these days, the power of God will keep you. Now turn over to Hebrews 4 and verse 16. Most of you know this verse. Because of the born again experience, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. It doesn't say come timidly. It doesn't say send a text. It doesn't say ask permission. Does it? It says come boldly. Say boldly. boldly. I like that. You said it boldly. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Why do we come boldly? That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything is there. It's spread out in front of you. It's reserved in heaven for you, right? And you go there. But notice it says you have to obtain it. That means you have to walk up and say, you know what? I'll take it now. And then you take it back with you. Right? Thank you. We think, and we've taught this through our churches, I just come and, and that God just kind of does something. And it's this strange metaphysical thing. It's not Hinduism. That's not how it's supposed to work. You obtain it. You have to take it. You have to make it a reality in your life. Is this helping you? So the best thing you can ever do is come to the throne of grace. Can you see it? That's where you find the power that you need. And it's already working. It's there that you find your mercy. And you find your grace in your time of need. But I just make a suggestion to you before you go there. Do this third step. Prepare your heart for God's heart. This is important. Prepare your heart to come before his power and to come before his presence. Hallelujah. Prepare your heart before you come to the throne room. You prepare your heart. You choose to believe God. Amen. I can't believe for you. But faith keeps you in his power. Now God gives us a picture about this as we study the, the tabernacle of Moses, doesn't he? And I want you to remember that everything in the Old Testament, it's a shadow of the real. We walk in reality today. But the picture that God gives us in the Old Testament, I think, gives us some understanding what God is providing for us today. Amen? What do we have to do? What did the priests have to do before they could meet with God? Well, there were certain things. How do I, Lord, how do I have to prepare my life? What should I do so I can come and meet with you at the throne of grace? Isn't that the same thing? Open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 40, 
Just one verse I want you to look at. Verse 12. It's talking about the door of the tabernacle here. For those of you who don't understand, this is before the temple was built. This is the, the temporary structure that God said, this is how you worship me. This is how you come before me. And so the door of the tabernacle is talking about that entrance place into the holy place on the inside. Amen? And notice what it says. It says, prepare Aaron. Who is Aaron? He was the high priest. And his sons to... To the door, bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And notice, and wash them with water. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may minister to me as a priest. You see, there's four things there. Do you see him? Do you see him? Number one, look at this. It says, be washed. Say, be washed. 4.12. Does it say Hebrews 4.16? Oh, never mind. that. It should be Exodus 40.12. I apologize. Bring, 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 come to the door. And the first thing to do, wash them with water. Be washed. Be washed. That's the first part. Now, what washes you? How does that work? I'm trying to help you thinking. Remember in, in the Old Testament, when you come into the, 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 the tabernacle, the first thing that you come to is this altar of sacrifice for sin. Do we have one of those? Jesus did that for us. And after you pass the altar, there's this big giant uh, laver. And that's where the priests had to wash. So you have to come and you have to wash up. Say wash up. Is this a one-time event? No, every time you come. Amen. Remember Jesus took his disciples and said, hey guys, let me wash your feet. Because you're still living here in the earth. And I want to do it to give you an example. You need to do this one to another. Amen. So number one, be washed. Then notice he says, uh, number two, put on the holy garments. In other words, be clothed. Different clothes. What clothes you? Holy Spirit's not clothes. I'm trying to help you. What, what are the garments you're supposed to put on? Garments of praise, holiness. Remember in Colossians 3, it says, take off the old and put on the new. Say, I take off the old and I put on the new. <laughs> what are we supposed to put on? Remember uh, Ephesians chapter 6? Full armor of God would be a good one. Righteousness. I'm going to do another message on that. But what I want you to see is a lot. Of, you know, it doesn't matter what I look like. God loves me anyway. But here it says to put on holy garments. You see it? The third one. Notice it says, and anoint him. In other words, be anointed. What is the, what is the anointing? Can you describe that? We hear it used everywhere. Is, that is the Holy Spirit. To anoint means to, to rub in. Do I really need this? Yeah. If you want to go to the throne of grace. Every time you meet with God. Be anointed. Before you go in, say fresh anointing. And so what God did five years ago doesn't count. Be anointed.
And the fourth one, notice it says, and consecrate him. Now this word consecrate is an interesting word. It, it means to set apart. Now these priests were already consecrated. They were set apart for this uh, uh, purpose, you know. Anthony, you're set apart for the drums. And we are so glad you're there. Aren't you glad he's there? You have been consecrated as a drummer. You getting that? Hallelujah. Pastor Bob, you have been consecrated as a father of the house. You getting this? You've been set apart into that. But this word consecrate here, I don't know why they do it. All the modern translations in English remove the word sanctify and replace it with consecrate. In the King James Bible, this, the word that is here is sanctify. Now, you guys, you, you, you don't need to be consecrated. You already are. Right? I remember uh, about six months ago, we had a consecration service and all of you came up right here. And we rededicated our hearts to Jesus. Remember that day? I haven't forgotten that. That was, an, that was a holy moment. But you're living in that now. But stuff happens in your life. And every once in a while you need to be sanctified again. Now what does the word sanctify mean? It means to make clean. We all go through things, don't we? You can have an, an object that's that's consecrated for a purpose, and as you use it, it might get dirty. It might need to be a reset or cleaned up before you use it again. Amen. Aren't you glad you sanctify your dishes after every meal? That's what this word uh, sanctify means, and it's a, it's a different word than the word for consecrate. And the only translation I've found that has remained consistent in this regard, is King James Bible. You see, you can be consecrated and still need to be made clean again. And here, the Holy Spirit is trying to teach us, you need to be sanctified before you come. In other words, you need to have everything right in your heart. You need to be made clean again. Oh, I like this. Does this help you today? Now, now, you can't do this on your own. Only the Holy Spirit can do this. Can you catch this? And church, if you look at this verse, it's all looking forward towards the resurrection. Why? What Jesus did through resurrection is all that is necessary to prepare your heart for his presence as you believe. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands and thank God today for the power of the Holy Spirit that can come and do things you're unaware of because of resurrection. We are kept by the power of God through faith. And what has God given to us? The moment you receive him by faith, what does he give? Well, he gives you beauty. He gives you strength. Amen. Think about these things. He gives you holiness. He sanctifies your life. Amen. He anoints you. Amen. He gives you praise. Some of you were pitiful before you got saved. Now all, all you can do is praise. And your family thinks you're crazy. Some of your family members won't even talk to you. God gives you vengeance. Righteous indignation. God gives you strength. God gives you salvation. Hallelujah. He gives you zeal. And he gives you the fruit of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So we come. We cry out to God. Help me, Lord. I come to you by faith. Hallelujah. And when you go through these processes, now you're dressed. Now you're ready. Now you're ready to meet with God at the throne room. Face to face. Let everything you do be done through his resurrection power. By the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's important that you prepare to meet with God. Can you see the need for this? And when God touches you, it's a divine touch of life and power. It makes you 
come alive, it quickens your body and you'll know, God, I know this is you. It'll give you the courage to face your enemies. Remember what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four. I use this a lot. But this is how God operates. Look at this. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, what does it say? Believe that you receive them, and then you'll have them. When you believe, then you'll live. Not just saying you have it. That's not what he's saying here, is it? Not just saying you have it, but actually believing in your heart. So don't agree with your enemy. Don't conform. Don't cave in. Be strengthened by faith in the inner man. That's what keeps you in the power of God. And faith comes, how? By hearing. Hallelujah. Can you see how easy this can be? Just believe in your heart. Be born again. That's your part. Back to 1 John 5 and verse 4. John writes, whatever is born of God. That means there's no limitation nor distinction, is there? All of you. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Faith wakes you up. Faith lets you see things that were always there, but now you see it. Are your eyes being opened these days? Faith gives you ability. You can do things you couldn't do before. What? You overcome the world. I love some of the truckers' comments I heard in Canada. It says, you know, it doesn't really matter what happens to us, whether they remove the mandates or whatever, we've already won. Because the whole world is watching and they see the foolishness of tyranny. No one who believes in his heart continues to live according to the world. What do you do? Instead, you'll die to the worldly things. You can't love the world and love God at the same time. Have you figured that out? So faith gives you the ability to grab hold of what's in you, what is there, and get it out of the way so that God can bring in something that doesn't even exist yet and put it inside of you and cause it to manifest in your life. Oh, hallelujah. That's the miracle of the power of God working in you. I want you to lift your hands. I'm trying to provoke your faith this morning. Verse 5 says, Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Let go of your old thoughts and grab a hold of God's thoughts. The Word of God. If you build your life on your imagination, if you build your life on your own thinking, and we all have it, You will miss it. You have the word of God and that's all you need. The world will think you're crazy. The world will think you've lost your mind. The world will think you're untouched from reality. Come on, someone. But there is no limit in the word of God. Because that is the reality. Have reality, not imagination. Have the real, not the shadow. Have the real power of God working in your life. Just get to know Him. Get dressed. Come before His presence. Come to the throne of God. Go in and and converse with Him. Have you done that recently? Cry out to Him in faith. Why? Because nothing is impossible for you. But it really helps to know the mind of God before you start to pray. Amen. Because once you know 
what his mind is, then your petitions can line up with his will. Kind of important, isn't it? So your prayer rests completely on faith. Let this like precious faith become a part of you. It'll make you into an extravagant follower of Jesus. Ordinary people becoming extravagant followers. Daring followers. People who will risk all. People who will be strong in Christ Jesus. Willing to do exploits. We need some exploits in Tacoma. I don't know about you. Walk by faith until you're overcoming in every area. That's not legalism. That's the abundant grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah. If he's given you faith, you have an ability to overcome the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Need a few warriors to shout to God. There we go. I think a brave heart when he stands up there, you know, with his sword shouting to God. Yeah. That's you this morning. I hear 1 John 3, 20. If your heart condemns us, has that ever happened to you? If your heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. He still loves you, doesn't he? You might not know what to do, but the Spirit of God already knows what to do. He knows all things. You might think you know, but the Spirit of God already knows. And the more time you spend with Him, the more you'll know as well. So whatever is manifesting in your physical body or in your family or in your your, your relationships at work or in your marriage, God already knows it, doesn't it? Whatever is manifesting, God already sees it. And he's already made provision for that through his resurrection. Hebrews 4.13 says there's no creature hidden from his sight. All things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Church, I just encourage you and I... I, I, uh, I I commend you, I applaud you to continue to cease from your own striving. And keep these four things in in the forefront of your thinking. Be washed in the word. Be clothed with the mind and the authority of God. Be anointed. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon you again. And then be sanctified. Be made clean. Only Jesus can do this. Amen. He keeps you in the power of God through faith. But you must always prepare your heart for God's presence. Before you come to service, before you come to worship, prepare your heart. You have no idea what might happen if you do that. Hallelujah. Every time you go into your prayer closet, prepare your heart. Because God's not done with you, you mighty overcomer. I feel the Holy Ghost. Once you have the mind of the Spirit, once you understand what God's will is, then you can pray with authority. Believe God. Hallelujah. Then you can talk to the Lord and you'll receive everything that you need because God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for Gideon, he'll do it for you. If he did it for Deborah, he'll do it for you. If he did it for James and John, he'll do it for you. One more verse, then we're going to pray. Is it okay? Can we pray in church? In the name of Jesus, can we pray in the name of Jesus? Let's check in. I feel like I feel like uh, I feel like we're up up at the Grand Coulee Dam and they're about ready to open the gates and there's going to be this torrent of water that comes over 
and it's just going to flood the entire eastern Washington basin. <laughs> That's what I feel, sense in the spirit. Do you sense that this morning? Look at this verse, Mark, Matthew 9, 35. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing some disease, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. I want you to think about this. Jesus did this in the midst of a corrupted political system. A corrupted religious system. A corrupted financial system. And it worked anyway. He overcame the world. Hallelujah. You see, there's something that's in your heart right now that stands against defeat. That will not take no for an answer. And that is the faith of God that has been freely given to you. Remember Jesus said to you, all authority, all glory, all power has now been given to them that believe. Can you lift your hands and close your eyes? It's been given to you this morning. Heal every sickness. Heal every disease. Preach the good news of the kingdom in your families, in your schools, in the marketplace. Whoever will have an ear to hear, hallelujah, hallelujah, sow your life in faith. Sow your life in obedience to God's word. Stand uncompromisingly for the gospel of Jesus in a dark and a confused world. Don't worry what other people say about you. Don't try and figure it out in your own head. I got a couple of texts yesterday. They said, Pastor, your Facebook has been hacked. So if you get a message from me, it's not from me. I don't know how to unhack. I'm not a Facebook guy, so I apologize for that. But don't let other people get into your head. Amen? If you sow and keep on sowing. That's the key, isn't it? <laughs> if you stand... And keep on standing. Guess what? You'll reap blessing. Not maybe. Not, I'm not sure. But you shall receive blessing. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Receive the blessing of heaven right now. Right now. Right now. Each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. I decree abundant life over you and your family. Hallelujah. Habakorema setat. Why not, why, church, why not be overtaken by blessing? Don't you think Pierce County could use a blessing? Why not be overtaken by favor? Why not be overtaken by protection and provision? Why not you be the vessel of honor? Why not you be the one of increase for the things of God in this area? Aren't these the promises of God to you? Yes, they are. May the divine grace of God be on you, on your family, on your children, on your grandchildren, upon everything that you touch. But you'll have to stand. And you'll have to keep standing. You need to sow and keep on sowing. You need to love and keep on loving. I believe the day will come when the only love you'll find in the earth will be in the body of Christ. We're going to pr pray today to prepare our lives for God's presence. I want you to stand at your feet. See, when God touches you, you'll know it's God. Amen. Amen. I want you to think about this. He wants to wash you this morning. Right? He, wa he wants to clothe you this morning. He wants to anoint you. He wants to, to sanctify you. Why? So he, he can take you into the deep place. In the, in the throne room. Hallelujah. So, church, just come on uh, up here to the, to the front. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. I don't know what God's going to do, but he's going to do it. See, faith gives you the ability to grab a hold of what's in you and get it out of the way.
That's all you have to do. If you get it out of the way, then God can put something that does not even yet exist into you because he has something reserved in heaven that's supposed to go into you. Remember the story of Gideon I talked about? Gideon wasn't trying to save the world. He was just trying to bake some bread and kind of give the finger to the, to the enemy. Not in my house. And God said, no, 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 I have a whole lot more for you than this, Gideon, mighty man of valor. And God began to meet with him. And when Gideon could get his, his unbelief out of the way, his fear and apprehension out of the way, God turned him and put something in him that made him the warrior, the king of the entire nation. Now, I'm not saying that's what God's going to do for you today, but the Lord knows what he has in mind for you. So can we have some anointed prayer music? And I want you to lift your hands. We're going to pray right now. Hallelujah. Pastor David, help me. Where are you, Pastor David? Oh, go on that side. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift your hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift your hands. Help me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come up here. Hallelujah. He's clothing you with new garments. Thank you, Lord. A fresh anointing. Thank you. You've been sanctified not by your ability, but by the blood. For such a time as this, for such a time as this, Father, we thank you that you're raising us up for such a time as this. Lord, forgive us when we challenge your word. Forgive us when we take what you say to us and we set it on the shelf. Lord, we put our trust in your word and your ability to change us. Ooh. Ooh, la ma ba ba. Ooh, la ba 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 ba. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When you're, wa- when you're walking in new garments, people won't recognize you. And now a new anointing, anointing for today, anointing for today, anointing for today, anointing. Fire, 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 in Jesus' name. Fire of God, fire of God. Hurrato bobo su, rababababa, hombarana, rababababa, robobo, rababababa, rababababada, roboto ribadevo. Jesus, 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 Jesus. New garments, brand new garments. Time for all the old garments to go away. New garments. Hallelujah. No more worldly loves, just God. The anointing, fresh anointing, just receive that. Lord, we pray today for fresh anointing. We pray today. Lord, you said in your word that that Jesus is the one who sanctifies us. Lord, we pray that you make us clean today. There are things that we need to do this week, not in our human agenda, but in your plan. And, and God, you, you can't do it in an unclean vessel. So sanctify your church. Anoint your church. Clothe us with holy garments of righteousness and peace and joy and holiness. 
Let us be different. Wash us so that wherever we go, when we walk in the room, the demons have to flee. When we walk in the room, the comforter comes. When we walk in the room, your power is released and dispels the darkness. Not because of us, Lord, but because you have been risen from the dead. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. I feel the Holy Ghost.